the Liberty Hall of 1916 is not the Liberty Hall of 2016. Uh, that should be obvious. The building that was there in the 1916 Rising was the, originally the Northumberland Hotel, but had become the headquarters of the ITGWU in 1912, and in 1913 became the headquarters of the Irish Citizen Army. It housed the printing presses that printed Jim Larkin's Irish Worker, and subsequently James Connolly's Workers' Republic. And the printing presses used for the latter were the same printing presses eventually used to print the 1916 proclamation itself. In the aftermath of the Rising, the Irish Times described Liberty Hall as the centre of social anarchy in Ireland. And it was undoubtedly the case that throughout 1914, 15 and 16, the activities in the building had become increasingly more militant. It's perhaps most famous for the banner that adorned it from 1914 onwards. We serve neither King nor Kaiser, but Ireland. A month before the Easter Rising broke out, James Connolly and members of the Irish Citizen Army had repulsed a police raid at gunpoint. And the activities around the building were becoming increasingly more militant. From that point on, as in the, few, the weeks that led up to the Easter Rising, there was an armed guard of the Irish Citizen Army on the building. The building would have been used as, I suppose, a centre for, well, giving lectures and training and military strategy and so forth. It was also used to, well, it was also used as effectively a munitions factory, manufacturing homemade bombs, trying to kind of adjust cartridges and bullets so they could fit into other weapons than the weapons they were originally intended for. In the weeks prior to the rising, Liberty Hall had also been the venue to stage a play written by James Connolly called Under Which Flag the lead in which was taken by Sean Connolly, who was later killed at Dublin City Hall. The basic theme of the play was divided loyalties about a man who, well, should he join the Irish Citizen Army and fight for his country, or join the British Army? That was the essential theme of it. Liberty Hall was one of the venues identified by the British authorities to be raided in the event of any crackdown on insurgent groups in Ireland. On the weekend prior to the East Rising, it was also the site of deliberations carried out by the IRB's military council about whether or not the Rising should actually go ahead and on the morning of the rebellion itself, 24th of April, Liberty Hall became the primary venue at which members of the volunteers and the citizen army assembled before making their way out to the various locations they seized across the city. After that, Liberty Hall didn't really see much uh, fighting in the East Rising, though it was attacked. On Wednesday, the gunboat Helga came up the River Liffey and fired shells at the building and did some damage to it. Um, the Helga is one of the great myths of the East Rising. Everyone saw the gunboat and assumed that the gunboat did most of the damage in the city, Whereas in reality, most of the heavy damage in areas around O'Connell Street, that was, the, that was done by heavy artillery, you know, located in the vicinity of Trinity College and also around Grange Gorman. Um, the damage done to Liberty Hall was substantial, but it wasn't demolished. You know, it was in a position to be repaired in the aftermath. One of those killed outside Liberty Hall in the course of the Easter Rising, one of the few casualties, it should be said, in that area was Ernest Kavanagh, a former cartoonist on James Larkin's Irish worker. There was a coda to uh, Liberty Hall's role in the Easter Rising. When it was finally raided by British troops, they discovered that the printing presses used to print the proclamation had not been dismantled. The proclamation had been printed in two halves. Top half was printed first, bottom half printed second. The type for the bottom half was still in the hand press that had been used, and apparently these soldiers got printer's ink and began to knock off souvenir copies of the bottom half of the proclamation, some of which survive today.